signal, slide it along. It's looking pretty good. The only thing now we've got to look at is where our bevel meets our half lap, which is here. And so we've got a ridge running there. We can chisel it, scrape it, plane it. It just depends what works best, really. We've got a variety of other planes we can use. A little shoulder plane, rebate plane. And that one, this one's nice because it's got a very low set angle for the blade. And using your fingers as a, a fence, sometimes you can, not always, sometimes you can just run that along. And it shows it away, but I think So this one here, if we get the grain going the right way. So you just need to gently get rid of that lump and merge the two faces in together. By running your thumb along there, you can feel that it, the two surfaces just blend into one another. What I tend to do is to just cut off the top section of the previous plank after the transom because sometimes the, the two planks can, can run together. And so it's good to have a room for the, the next plank to be clamped, move about wherever it wants to. But it's also handy having that lower plank there to stick a little clamp on if we need to. So I just saw away the, the half lap of that plank underneath. And then we'll um, just clamp up our next plank make sure it's looking reasonable, mark the transom, take it off, cut the half laps and then try fitting it. So we just cramp our plank up in place, make sure that uh, it's the right sort of shape and we've got it the right way up, which always helps. And then we can also just use it to check the bevels that we've just planed on the plank below. We've still got the half laps to plane on this one, but uh, we can do that in a minute. So what we're just looking for really is that our plank
sits down more or less in our half lap there. That's it, that's just pinged in. And if we tap it down at the front, it's not far out of line. Then we can just measure our overlap, see what overlap we've got. Ease our plank in, stick a wedge. We've got three and seven eighths there. So we need three and an eighth showing on the inside. Give us our overlap. Let's wedge that there. Three and a half is our plank width. So we want two and three quarters showing on the inside. You see how this as the after end of the plank comes down towards the keel, this top edge lifts and comes up to our mould. So that's, if it was out there, it's not touching our mould. And you'd find then as you planked up, it'd be a real pain to get your planks to lie back on the mould. And what we're after is for that plank to end up at that angle, touching our mould, flat on our bevel below. Find a way. And hopefully then with the right amount of overlap. So go down that tap more. Cast our eye along the along the plank, make sure it's touching all the moulds, it's lying fairly flat in our bevel. Just to check really, is our half lap at the stern? That was planed into the plank below. We just want to make sure that our plank is gonna sit in there quite nicely. just a little maybe a millimeter or two to to shave off here or there when we actually come to fit it so that's looking pretty good I'll just mark the position of the transom we don't really need to mark the molds on it we can take it down now and plane the half laps and then have a go at fitting it. Now because this is the next plank on the port side, that's the area there that needs to be planed away with our half lap or Gerald. And similarly, that section there so that our next plank to go in can go in over it and also the same on the after end of the plank but we'll do that section in a minute this is how I tend to do it doesn't make a lot of difference really but it's a nice solid block of timber in the vise I can clamp my plank to the edge of it. And cut the Gerald using an old wooden rebate plane with a little strip of wood on there to act as a fence. This gives me my width of half lap. Now somewhere on the bench there's another one. There's the other one. Now they're diametrically opposed or opposite or whatever so that if the grain of the plank 
doesn't really let me plane the one way. I can use the other plane and plane back the other way with it. They're both set to the same width of cut. Just checking that. So it doesn't really matter which one I use for which half lap. It's whatever the grain allows, really. I always tend to use about 16 inches of half lap. There's no hard and fast rule. Some, some boat builders plane more off the top plank than they do off the lower plank. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. And I plane generally down to half the plank thickness. Some boat builders with clinker planking will plane almost away to nothing on the top edge of the lower plank. And then when they come to fit the next plank, they don't take anything off the bottom at all. That's fine. It just does leave a very thin sliver of planking um, through which you're trying to put roves and nails. So uh, I tend to prefer half the plank, thick plank thickness there. So we've got our plank just slightly overhanging the edge of our lump of hardwood. Come back about 16 inches, there's a mark there, give us a rough idea. I just see the grain of this plank is going to be troublesome. So I try our other plane, which we can use the opposite direction. That's given us a better job. We're going to run out to nothing around our 16 inch mark. So you don't want to take too much off here. It's just getting this end down to half the plank thickness. Almost down to our half thickness there. Just clean away the wispy bits of timber. Bottom edge at the front sorted. All we do now is turn it over to do the top edge. 16 inches up there. That's our front end, nearly sorted. 